Senate Republicans are fighting the clock and each other to get an Obamacare repeal bill approved before the end of next week. Joining us tonight is the co-author of that plan, South Carolina Republican Senator Lindsey Graham. Senator, thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank you. Well, first, I want to go into some of the details of this plan mm -hmm. and the substance. You're getting attacked from Democrats, uh, from some governors, uh, some from your own mm -hmm. party, uh, about mm -hmm. concerns over pre-existing conditions and whether right. this is going to somehow open this up to states saying you can't you can't right. cover these people right well the answer is absolutely not uh, there's a mandate in this bill that goes with the block grant that every state in the nation must cover people with pre-existing conditions so not one person is going to be denied coverage in any of the 50 states because they have a pre-existing condition when it comes time to insure them it has to be affordable and credible care and who, we who run makes that determination what is the definition uh, of affordable uh, uh, it runs through the CHIPS program, uh, which is a children's health program. It's been around for 20 years. Bill Clinton created it for low-income children. So what it will allow is affordable and credible uh, to be flexible. California may have a view of affordable and credible. South Carolina will have a different view. But nobody can be denied coverage because of a pre-existing illness. Nobody can be kicked out of insurance. And the cost has to be affordable and credible uh, within the lines of the CHIP criteria. And in 20 years, no one's ever complained about insurance coverage under CHIP. So that's a lie by the left. And let me tell you what they're worried about. They're worried about the power leaving Washington going to the states. If you're a Bernie believer, this is your worst nightmare because I take the money and power out of Washington and I let, I let states decide this, but you do have to guarantee, guarantee the issue in pre-existing uh, conditions coverage is a mandate under the bill. But the real objection here by the left is that we take money and power out of Washington uh, and end single-payer health care as we know it. We had Senator Coons on uh, last hour and here's what he said. He said uh, Graham Cassidy will end Medicaid as we know it, eliminate all the <laughs> consumer protections in the ACA by giving states the opportunity to repeal them. It'll lead to a less healthy America. Yeah. Well, I, I like Chris Coons. Uh, you're 0 for 3, my friend. What leads to a less healthy America is Obamacare. Obamacare is collapsing. 70% of the counties in this country have uh, one insurer to go to, one person left in the exchange, and many of them have no options. Premiums have gone up. Deductibles have gone up. It's been a nightmare for the American people, and how do we replace it? We take the same amount of money. We uh, eliminate the individual mandate, the employer mandate. You can reimpose them at the state level if you like. You don't have to, but you can. But we take what's left over, the same amount of money, and give it to the states. They have to cover sick people. They have the flexibility to decide how to cover uh, sick people. they got to do it in an affordable, credible way, as to Medicaid. Medicaid in 2027, Brett, will cost more to the federal government than the Defense Department. It is growing at twice the, the level of inflation in the private sector. If you get a headache under Medicare, you run to the emergency room. We pay the bill. Nobody asks uh, any questions. What we'll do in year eight, eight years from now, start lowering the inflation rate to meet what the private sector level of inflation is to save hundreds of billions of dollars. But we also achieve flexibility. We allow states to do what Mike Pence did in Indiana, offer different ways of uh, delivering Medicaid. Obamacare is what is the biggest threat to the American health care system, not state-controlled health care. We block granted money uh, in 96 to deliver better welfare services. The welfare rolls went down. The cost of the government... Uh, uh, did not go up. Uh, Obamacare is a disaster. I'm going to get the money and power out of Washington. And I'm going to put it in the hands of people that you go to church with. Under my plan, if you don't like what you get, you can call the governor, you can call your state house member. Under Obamacare, who do you call? I asked people in Greenville today, raise your hand. Do you know your state house representative? Do you know who your governor is? Everybody raised their hand at the chamber event. Who runs Ob Obamacare in South Carolina? Nobody could raise their hand. Yeah. So to Chris Coons, you're a good man, but you're wrong. All right. So the there is a shifting of money here, though. There are some states that get more money. There are some states that get less money than they're currently yes. getting. Oregon, Vermont, Massachusetts, New York, Delaware, they all get less. How do you convince a state that's getting less money than they are now that this is somehow better for them? So what I'm trying to do for America is to be fair. Under Obamacare, four states get 40% of the money. Do you know who those four states are? I don't. Actually. New York. 
California, Massachusetts, and Maryland. They're 20% of the population. They take 40% of the money because they're blue states that have very generous health care benefits under Medicaid. They're gobbling up most of the money. They get twice uh, over their population. So what I do, I take them down over a 10-year period. We have a soft landing for those states. And in 2026, here's what I tell Chris Coons, every patient in every state will get the same contribution uh, from the federal government to deal with health care as every other state. They won't be four states getting 40% uh, of the money that represent 20% of the population. South Carolina goes up. Some states stay the same. Some states come down. But my goal is parity. And 10 years from now, we're going to have a system where every patient in every state gets the same contribution. If you find that a problem, then the then the problem is with you. All right, so just quickly, the politics here and where you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're basically right. at the same spot the skinny bill was looking for that one or two votes right. to get it over the finish line. Uh, the difference between this bill and the skinny bill is who the hell knows what the skinny bill is? Everybody knows what federalism is. If you're a conservative Republican, you believe that the state should have as much power and authority as possible. The Tenth Amendment is real. So this is a different concept. All right, do you You'll have be the allowed. Votes, I think so. I really do. I'll be honest with you. I've never been more excited than I am right now. We need 50 votes to get this over the finish line. The president has been working like a tiger. The vice president, Mitch McConnell, is going to give us a vote. We're giving numbers to states, and I can tell you this. If you want money and power out of Washington, you want to end the march to single-payer health care, this is your last best chance. This is the biggest change in health care in my lifetime. This is federalism versus socialism. I think we're going to get 50 Republicans to vote for federalism. And I, I'll make a prediction. A couple of Democrats are going to come on board because their state does so well. I like New York, California, Massachusetts, and Maryland, but I want to give them all the money. Senator Lindsey Graham, uh, co-author of this bill. Thanks for the time. <laughs> Thank you.